Spanish government's determined to prevent Carlos Puigdemont from being sworn in as president again. And today it took another step forward. Hello and welcome to Catalan News. Mariano Rajoy's cabinet is to challenge Puigdemont's nomination as candidate for president in the parliamentary debate to be held next week. Rajoy's number two announced an appeal in the constitutional court. This caused outrage amongst pro-independence parties who even branded the move as a coup d'etat. We'll get you all the reactions to this move by Madrid today. And here at Catalan News, we'll also get you some positive figures about the unemployment rate in the country and the traffic at Barcelona ports. The pro-independence forces prevailed in last month's election. Carlos Puigdemont's candidacy was the most voted force by citizens for a Catalan state. Yet the Spanish government wants to prevent him from being reinstated as president, either at a distance from Brussels or in Barcelona. The very first big clash between the Catalan and Spanish administrations in the new term is already set. The Spanish government is determined to stop Carlos Puigdemont being reinstated as Catalan president. After launching a major police operation to prevent a surprise arrival of the Catalan leader, the government of Mariano Rajoy will now involve the judiciary too. Vice President Soraya Sáenz de Santa Maria announced today that her executive would challenge Puigdemont's candidature, announced by the Parliament President Roger Torrent this week in the Spanish Constitutional Court. After asking the opinion of the Council of State, the case could make it to Spain's highest court tomorrow. Y es que el señor Puigdemont tiene una orden de detención en España. Entonces, el primer elemento, la primera actuación que tienen que hacer eh, en España, si entra en territorio español, es ponerse a disposición de la justicia y si no, que le pongan las fuerzas y cuerpos de seguridad del Estado a disposición de los jueces. According to the vice president, the Spanish government could also challenge a potential investiture at a distance, should Puigdemont try to take office from Belgium. Madrid will also challenge the possibility of the MPs also in Brussels delegating their votes. This move sparked outrage from the pro-independence parties. Puigdemont's Together for Catalonia ticket even accused the Spanish government of not respecting democracy. Estem davant d'un nou acte de covardia perquè no accepten el resultat electoral del 21 de desembre. És, per dir-ho de manera suau, un cop d'estat. Strong words. But what will the pro-independence parties actually do? The Catalan Parliament president confirmed that plans to elect Puigdemont will go ahead, with the investiture debate to be held next Tuesday at 3 p.m. Together for Catalonia wasn't the only Catalan political party reacting to the news today. While the Unionist parties mostly supported Rajoy's decision, pro-independence Esquerra Republicana expressed outrage. It is the party of the Catalan Parliament's president who made no remarks on the issue today. He's under increasing pressure from the Spanish government and the majority of the Catalan chamber. Si Carles Puigdemont podia ser candidat i ara és diputat, també pot ser candidat a la presidència. El que intenten ara no té cap mena de base jurídica. Treure l'autogovern de les urpes de la senyora Soraya Sáenz de Santa Maria i que aquesta proposta d'un govern que pugui governar des de Catalunya i no des de Dinamarca o des de Brussel·les comenci a pensar-se ja. Li vam demanar al senyor Torrent que proposés un altre candidat perquè entenem que el senyor Puigdemont no compleix cap dels requisits, ja no només és que estigui fugit, sinó que està imputat per cinc delictes. Nosaltres volem escoltar què diu el Consell d'Estat i què diria el Tribunal Constitucional, perquè el que nosaltres volem és que comenci la legislatura de manera normal. The political turmoil in the last months of 2017 in Catalonia didn't negatively affect the unemployment situation in the country. In fact, the jobless rate increased by only 3,600 people from October to December, but it's been the lowest increase since 2013 for this period. This is only a tenth of the unemployment increase in Spain as a whole. According to official figures, the jobless rate in Catalonia at the end of 2017 was 12.6%. This is the lowest end-of-year figure since 2008, when the economic crisis started to affect the number of people in work. This is more than two points less than in 2016, and around 80,000 less people than 12 months ago. The same figures show that more than 110,000 new job posts have been created in 2017. Some of the newly employed people might have been in the port of Barcelona, Today we learn that it's consolidating as a major international hub. In fact, it's in the top 20 busiest ports in Europe, behind the likes of Hamburg, Rotterdam and Southampton. And last year proved to be another successful year for the Catalan capital's maritime facility, with a pronounced rise in both container and passenger traffic. 
The port of Barcelona closed 2017 with a record 26% increase in traffic compared to the previous year. All in all, the overall weight handled exceeded 61 million tons for the first time ever, making it the fastest growing port in Europe last year. According to the data released today by the Port Authority, in relation to the previous five years, 2017 has been record-breaking. But according to the port's president, this growth is far from normal. Es lo que nosotros hemos catalogado como un salto a escala. Es decir, no es un uh, crecimiento normal. With regard to container traffic at the port, nearly 3 million 20-foot equivalent units were handled last year, an increase of around 30 percent. The port also welcomed nearly 3 million cruise ship passengers as well last year. In fact, even in months considered to be low season, the amount of cruise passengers increased by 13 percent. Overall, a total of 4 million people passed through the maritime facility, including both cruise and freight passengers. The net turnover generated by the port also increased, reaching 167 million euros, 7% more than 2016. Although the port itself deals with a diverse range of countries, China continued to be its largest commercial partner. In 2017, the economic powerhouse accounted for 44% of all imports and 11% of exports. Last year was also an interesting year for the Barcelona hotel industry. The political tension of last autumn did affect the sector, but despite this, it closed 2017 with positive figures. In fact, the Barcelona hotel industry finished the year with a record turnover, 6% higher than 2016, despite a slump in the final quarter, coinciding with a drop in tourists coming to the country. The president of the Barcelona Hoteliers Association lamented a 15% fall in turnover in October and November and a 25% fall in December. These decreases led to a less marked growth than the one taking place through the first half of the year. Even though 2017 still finished on a positive note, there are fears there will be a drop in hotel reservations in the coming months. If you've already been to Barcelona, you surely remember the building behind the magic fountain of Montjuic. It's the National Art Museum of Catalonia, and a new exhibition is on display. More than 200 pieces from the Renaissance and Baroque periods are being exhibited in a new and interesting way. The National Art Museum of Catalonia is exhibiting 250 new artworks. The museum has reconsidered the way it displays its works and is offering a new discourse for the exhibition. Landscapes, portraits and religious iconography are some of the driving forces of an overall narrative in the collection that includes pieces from the Renaissance and Baroque periods. The collection spans over 300 years and has been organized following a thematic approach. But not only that, it also shows the public the interest that inspired the artist in the first place, creating a dialogue between the visitor and the work. La collection permet fomentar aquest diàleg, fomentar aquesta interpelar en el visitant avui des de present. És una mirada moderna, més oberta, que posa millor en valor les obres que tenim. Zurbaran, Il Tintoretto, Viladomato or Vecellio. The museum is now displaying more artworks by more artists than ever before. The links between the works have also been strengthened, making contextualization easier and allowing multiple interpretations. In total, it has around 1,400 pieces, yet most of them are not displayed and even some pieces were not included in the collection owing to lack of space. Currently, the possibility of expanding the museum is on the table. So far, the best placed option is a pavilion next to the museum, but public administrations will have the final say. If you prefer modern music to Renaissance art, you've also got to plan a visit to the Catalan capital for the coming months. Guitar BCN 2018 was presented today and its organizers claimed it will be the best in history. Already confirmed for the festival are big international names such as Bob Dylan, Ringo Starr and Future Islands. More than 25,000 tickets for this edition have already been sold, raising expected attendance numbers to 60,000. The festival begins this Saturday with a Jorge Drexler concert in the world-class Liceo Opera House in Barcelona. We're done for today, but before we go, we leave you with images of an audio-visual experience in the caves of Montserrat, widely known for being next to the most famous mountain in Catalonia of the same name. From now on, the caves will explain their history to visitors using audio-visuals. Enjoy and see you tomorrow.